I got illegally thrown out. So what I started doing was reading law book. That's illegal. Well, I'll just sue you. That's illegal. The law states you're not supposed to do that. By law, he wasn't supposed to throw me out. That I can get money for that. When you start dealing with me, make sure you got your T's crossed and your I's dotted. Make sure it's not against the law because I ain't got nothing to do. Otherwise, I'm going to sue you for it. Do you really want to go through life and that's your motto is, hey, let's just sue everyone? Somebody did something to my life. I shouldn't be living in my car. So all I'm doing is fighting back. I'm fighting differently, though. My name is Quashante Short. I'm 45 years old and I'm calling from Michigan. And what do you do for a living? What do I do for a living? Right now I do consulting, research, but I'm not with a particular company. I have my own business. And how much you make uh, you doing that right now? It varies. There's no particular number as far as how much I make per year. What's give me give me a range. If I had to use the income from my last job, had it went the full year, I would have made about forty five to fifty five thousand a year. Okay. And are you going to make 45 to 50 with your business this year? Or what's it look like on a monthly basis right now? Monthly basis. Monthly basis is way less than that. Some months I don't get any income at all. So that's why I say it varies. What do good months look like? If bad months or little income, what does a good month look like right now? 2,000, 3,000, 5,000? I can't say. I'll say on a good month, 200. 200? Only 200? 200. That's not even living wages then. Exactly. How are how are you breathing? How are you alive right now? The good Lord. How long have you been trying to do your own business? And you said you were in a previous role that was forty five to fifty thousand dollars a year. When did that role end? That role ended uh last month. What happened? I was I was fired. You're fired for a cause or what happened there? There was a situation between my supervisor and I and she I felt threatened. I got bumped the day before. I reported that. I reported a safety hazard. Then the next day, I finally met my supervisor. I got bumped again, and then she asked me about a box cutter, and I felt threatened. I reported it, but it actually went under investigation. I got terminated in the midst of it. I filed an EEOC complaint, and it's currently under investigation now. Okay, and what were you doing in this previous role? I was working at Amazon as a, they call it a fulfillment associate. And then I also was working part-time as a material handler at FedEx Express. Okay, and so you're no longer working at either of those? So you got fired from one, what happened to the other one? The other one, that was under investigation as well. It was working for the airport. So they wanted me to do two sets of fingerprints. And I questioned why they wanted me to do two sets of fingerprints. And their explanation was just in case the first set of fingerprints get rejected. I didn't contest it. I didn't deny it. I just said, you know what, is it possible to do one? And then after that, if those get rejected, I'll come back in and do another one. Because I have like probably over 50 to 100 lawsuits and they're all stemming down to identity theft. So Anytime somebody wants double the fingerprints or double the background check, I question it. We got to uncover, I, I'm confused on the 50 to 100 lawsuits, but we'll we'll dive into that in a second. It sounds like there's a lot to unpack there, but um, okay, so that job is under investigation too because you don't want to do the two fingerprints. Okay, so a lot of a lot of things happening there. Mm-hmm. And so amidst all that, right now you're making between zero and $200 a month. Exactly. How are you keeping the lights on right now then? Honestly, I live in my car. How long has that been going on for? Off and on for the last four years, but the most recent bout has been since February. And then February, were you living in an apartment or where were you living then? With my boyfriend. With your boyfriend, okay. And so are y'all not together anymore? No, he threw me out. He physically threw me out. So we got a lot of lot of things to unpack here then and figure out how can we improve your current financial situation. So let's talk about rating your financial situation on a scale of one to 10. Where would you rate yourself right now in terms of overall financial picture, including income, assets, debt, everything else in between? I would say in the middle. In the middle, okay. If you're in the middle, I'd like to see little to no debt, decent income, living below our means, but right now, given you're living in your car, little to no income, I feel like it's probably... Probably going to put you at the lower end of that scale, but let's dive into the current debts and assets that you sent over and we'll uh, check it out then. So we'll start with debts. You said debts, $125 for a personal loan, $45,000 for student loans at a 5% interest rate, 
Credit cards, we have 1612 on a credit card at 22.9% interest rate. And is there any other debt right now that I'm missing? No, not according to my credit report. Well, there's like some little debt, maybe a hundred dollars here, a hundred dollars there, maybe two, maybe three hundred dollars. Nothing, nothing over five or nothing like that. Okay, so three hundred dollars. So that total debt, forty-seven thousand dollars and some change. And then assets. What assets do we have right now? It looks like we have a car that's worth five thousand one hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. We have retirement accounts, about 1500 and then we have $100 in the bank. Is there any other assets? Mm, I'm currently the owner, property manager of my grandmother's estate. Okay. So owner of your grandma's estate. And what is what is your portion valued at? Mm, when you say portion, what do you mean? Are there other individuals involved or are you the full owner of her entire inheritance. Well, there are others involved, but the house is solely in my name at this time. Okay, and what's the house valued at? The SEV, the state equalized value, is nineteen thousand. How long has that been going on, and why is the house still? Why haven't you sold the house, or why aren't you living in the house? The house, I don't know. My grandmother passed away in twenty twenty. I just got the house a couple months ago. There's some things going on with the house. The bathroom needs to be completed redone it looks like the toilet is falling inside the basement looks like the floor is getting ready to fall in almost like if you walk in the bathroom you're going to fall in the basement consumers energy in order to turn on the power they've cut the wires to the house from the pole so i have to get an electrician to come out to handle that and that's basically it and then on top of that, the taxes, the taxes are due. So when I say that the house is, I don't want to say the house is solely mine. Yes, I know they're there. I I know that they're there, but nobody has paid the taxes. Nobody has fixed the bathroom. And I just got it three months ago. And my grandmother has been deceased for four years. And then my uncle has been deceased for over a year. So somebody else had it before I even was told about it. Because I backed away from it in the original because I know that there's other people that's older than me that would take precedent over me. But when I came in and I saw it, I'm like, why is there no, you know, why nobody has paid taxes? Why nobody has fixed the bathroom? Why is it just sitting here? Why? I had a lot of whys. Why, why did it take three years for you to get it? it? Was Were you the recipient in her will then? No, I went through probate court. Okay. And... Why did you receive it then if it wasn't in her will? According to the law, you can do that. I became personal representative over the estate. The law states that the personal rep has full rights as if she was he or she was the owner of the actual property in the beginning. That's what the law states here in Michigan. But I guess my question is, how how do you have a tie to it? I, I'm not familiar with the law in Michigan, but how, how do you have a tie to it if it's your grandma, there's other people involved and you weren't in the will? For receiving the house? Um, there was no will, so the house had to go through the probate court. So when it went through probate court, they have to put it in the newspaper. The house is going through probate, da 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 da. Nobody responded, nobody objected, nobody did anything. And that's how I was able to go. So it actually went through the process of probate court twice. Okay. So you got it through probate court because there was no will and no one else made a claim on any of the estate. Correct. What stopped me from selling it right now? My grandmother. My grandmother, anytime I was down on my luck or anything like that, my grandmother's door was always open. She's always said that her door is always open. So I don't want to sell it. I looked at it as a an investment opportunity. Even if I wasn't to live in the house, I could fix the house up and put somebody in it and make it a rental property. I've done that before. I used to be an owner of my own house that my dad gave me and unfortunate circumstances caused me to do that, where I actually rented my house out and put somebody in there for three years, and I had income for three years. So I just didn't see it as a good opportunity to sell it. Say we sell it for 25000 and then I decide to split it between all of us. So we just get, say, I'm throwing a number off the top of my head, we get $5,000. You can spend $5,000 in, what, a month, two months? And then we don't have a property. Well, that's a, a property that you can keep and make some money off of it. So I, you know, I, I look at it as more of being business 
You know, if I don't have somewhere to live, you know, like right now I got $200 a month coming in for income. Where am I going to go for $200 a month to live? My grandmother's house, again, she said her door was always open. That's somewhere that I can go and I could probably live there for $200 a month. But where else can you go with for that? If you need a place to live, if you sold the house, I would give you at least a few months to get back on your feet, find a new job and have a place to live so you're not living on your car. But also if you can fix up the house and be able to live in it, that's another thing that'd be great or have income coming. I, I agree with that. I'm just trying to throw out ideas to get you out of your car. That could be one idea to sell it so you have some funds for a few months. It doesn't mean go spend it all. It means, hey, give you a base to have a roof over your head for a few months. But fixing up is another route, but you have to have money to do that as well. And right now we don't have money to fix it up. So, okay. Thank you for all that. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, but we, I think right now we got to figure out a plan for you. You've been living in and out of your car for the last four years and with nothing in retirement and being in your forties, we got to figure out a way. How do we, how do we push you forward so that when you want to retire one day, when you want to travel, do something, you can be in a spot where you can enjoy life and not have to worry about money. So we have a lot of work to do to get there, but I want to kind of take it back to, to you, who you are, how we got to this point. So tell us a little about yourself from your childhood to what brought you to this point now. Childhood. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, childhood. In elementary school, I played sports. I'm a very active person. So I play every sport from basketball to volleyball to kickball to, I don't know, tennis, run track, softball, then I went to junior high school. Junior high, I stopped playing basketball. I only played volleyball, and I think I did softball. I was a pretty good student, A, B student, maybe C. From there, I went to high school. I ended up going to two different high schools. I went to Carmen Ainsworth High School, and I went to Flint Northwestern. I only went to Flint Northwestern for one year. My mom was married to my brother and my sister's dad, so they went through a divorce or a legal separation. And that's how I ended up going to Carmen Ainsworth. There, because I had a sister and brother, my mom was now a single mom. I started to babysit. So babysitting was kind of like my side hustle. My job at that time, I would babysit. I would do hair, things like that. Then my mom bought a house back over by Flint Northwestern. When she bought that house, which was over by her husband. They finally went through a divorce, got a divorce. I didn't graduate on time. I didn't play sports anymore because I became mom instead of sister. <laughs> From there, I ended up, I went to prom. I went to prom multiple times. Um, I didn't go to the prom where I went to school at, which was Flint Northwestern because I went back to Flint Northwestern for like a semester. Did you go, did you go to college after that? I did. I met my son's father, my husband or whatever, I met him at 18, actually uh, at the prom, not at my prom, but at Northwestern prom. We courted each other. We dated each other or whatever. And he asked me to marry him right in the beginning. We stayed together up until he passed. I went to college. I actually, I ended up getting a job at the hospital. I worked there for like seven years while I went to school for nursing and I went to school for business. During that time, my dad gave me a house. My son's father, my husband already owned his own house. So trying to think, um, I lived in my house. He lived in his house. We went back and forth. We had two houses. Um, actually, financially, we was doing pretty good. Uh, he passed away. When he passed away, I still had our son, who at the time was six years old. So I became a single mom. I did what I needed to do, which is how I ended up renting my house out. I rented my house out, um, got that income coming in for about three years, and I ended up going to nursing school. And I think that's where my problem started because me and my son's father or my husband, we had the discussion about me going to nursing school, and it was always a no for him. But when he passed, I ended up going to nursing school, and that made me have to downsize my apartment and a lot of different things happened. I started having to sell stuff to manage because I had to take a leave from work, took a year off from work to try to complete nursing school. So at that point, we went to go stay with my biological dad for a short period of time. We stayed there for a minute. I worked different, you know, odd jobs, stuff like that. Then we had to leave from staying with my biological dad and we moved, I don't know, to Burton or somewhere. And then um, 
I had finished college and I got my um, associate's degree. My son was maybe, I don't know, junior high school, something like that. From there, we just kind of, I worked different odd jobs. I really haven't had a full-time steady position um, since I got terminated from the hospital, which was in 2007. So I kind of did a little bit of everything. Um, what happened in 2007 in the hospital? Um, I actually got terminated. What, what for, if you want me asking? Actually, I think it was more of a, I remember it was an incident that came in that was under investigation. My job was a health unit coordinator. So my job was basically to answer the phones, check the doors when people call in. And I either let them in or not let them in if they have the correct information. So the guy came in, well, that guy came, called and he had the correct number, so I let him in. When he came in, the nurses had to tell him that he wasn't allowed to come in to see the baby because I worked in neonatal ICU. And so when they told him that he couldn't come in, he got upset, he got irate, he started throwing things around, he got violent, I had to call security. And they faulted me for that incident for letting him in. So nobody put at the front desk, hey, this person's not able to come in because he's not the father of the child. That was actually something that the mother should have done or the nurse should have notified me of. But I got reprimanded for that and they found me at fault. Uh, which is something I'm actually suing for. I felt like it was a wrongful termination because I'm not security. My job title was not security. My job title was a health unit coordinator. Okay, so that happened in 2007. Why didn't, haven't you got another job at another hospital or what happened to going to nursing school and going to become a nurse at a hospital or a clinic or something? People ask me all the time why I haven't gotten back in the hospital or why I haven't gotten a job in the healthcare field. Honestly, I have no idea. I have the experience, I have education, but I apply and I never get it, which is really interesting. Like, I don't know. If I had the answer to that, I'd, I could tell you, but I have no idea. Okay. That's kind of my first cause, like figuring out how can we put that back to use? And um, when's the last time you applied to a hospital then? I apply all the time, probably today. How, how many jobs would you say you're applying to a week right now? Over a hundred. Over 100 a week and you're not getting any responses? A lot of times I get no responses. Sometimes I get a lot of denials. It's almost like it's almost like the modeling world. You know, you apply to all these different gigs and, you know, it's it's a, you don't know if you're going to get it or not. And are you applying to like department stores, retail stores, restaurants, grocery stores, all of those as well? Most definitely. I, I don't limit myself, even though my background is in the healthcare field, things like that. I don't limit myself to healthcare. I look at more of the skill set of the job that they, you know, the what skills that were, what skills are they looking for? So I look at more of the skill set that they're looking for and I apply that way, which opens the door up for me. Good. You're not limiting your, your choices because right now you don't really have much option besides, hey, we need we need a job, need income. So you got to be applying to anything, everything that you possibly can. Are you going in in person to places as well to apply? Well, you know, with this uh, tech savvy world, a lot of places you they, you have to apply online, and then the ones that you know are kind of like come in, you know, at McDonald's. My first job was working at a school district for an accountant. You know, my first job was, I was making 425. My first job that I applied to, I was a an accounting co-op student. And then from there, I worked at Long John Silver's. McDonald's wouldn't hire me way back then. I know McDonald's wouldn't hire me now. I'd definitely be overqualified. Have you tried? <laughs> I have. McDonald's have turned me down two times. <laughs> Right now, it makes no sense if you're applying over 100 jobs a week, even if it's grocery stores, restaurants, to go be a hostess or a waiter or something, even cleaning. Like You got to figure out how to get a job ASAP because that's obviously, it's impossible to fix a financial situation if you have no income coming in. And living off $200 a month right now, I'm concerned for you from the standpoint, I don't want you to live in your car for the rest of your life. So we got to figure out how do we get income so we can change that first and foremost before, before we even can even look at or even talk about really the debt and how to how to change that. So let's talk about so your childhood. Did your parents ever talk to you about money growing up at all? Most definitely, all the time. My mom worked in the banking industry. My mom took me to work with her at the bank 
at the credit union, actually at the credit union, because she used to work at the credit union. And then in high school, I wanted, I've always wanted to be an accountant. So an accountant or finance, something along those lines. So I took those classes when I got in high school. I knew what I wanted to do. What, uh, what are some lessons that you remember that your mother taught you growing up about finance? Pay yourself first. Pay yourself first. Okay. Any, any else that sticks out or you remember? Anything else that sticks out? I can't remember. No. Take your daughters to work day. <laughs> Pay yourself first is a good piece of advice. Uh, it's just difficult to do that when we don't have income coming in, but that is very important. So you have to Pay yourself first, start saving and investing before you start spending on the uh, the fun things in life and uh, the things that don't matter at all. So, okay, well, let's talk about your current budget you sent over then. So we went on a tangent and we didn't even finalize your net worth on this. So we said we put the value of the home of your grandmother's home, 19000 But it sounds like if you were to sell it, that split between three, four, or five people, somewhere in that ballpark. Is that correct? I haven't done, well, actually, I have done a little research on that. But kind of, sort of, unless I can get them to sign off on not... Not splitting it? Yeah, that's actually, yeah. So is it fair to say that if it's worth 19000 or 20000 right now, that... It's not worth it. If it's if you were to split it, it's worth 5000 or 8000 on your end, if we're being conservative? Yep. Okay, I'll put 8000 And then my mom's house, too. So my mom passed away, too. So that's another probably 8000 So I'm still at 19000 Okay, so your mom's house, you own that too, or is that going through probate right now as well? Well, my sister's on that one, but there's three of us. Okay, so yeah, I guess you're still sitting around nine, fifteen to 20000 somewhere in that ballpark, so yeah, I'll put fifteen for right now. Okay, so that means your total assets between the value of the car, home, retirement accounts, and savings is $21,700, which puts your net worth at negative 25000 and some change. Does that sound about right? Have you ever calculated your net worth before? Yeah, I guess. Well, we got to figure out how do we change that? How do we get that in the positive direction? Because I don't want you to be 60 years old and have a negative net worth and having to pin solely on Social Security to live. I want you to be able to enjoy life. So let's talk about your current expenses then. So we don't have any rent. You t so you put utilities ten dollars and home maintenance three thousand five hundred dollars. Why did you put those there? If we're living out of a car right now. In order to maintain my grandma's house, she had there's taxes. So the taxes are past due. That I want to say that number includes what it's gonna cost to get the consumers the electrical inspection done and the taxes. Oh, that thirty five hundred dollars is for the taxes and for grandma's house. Okay. Okay, so that's not technically in your monthly budget because, I mean, well, it's not in your recurring every month budget. That is, we it needs to be paid, it needs to be fixed, but it's not a recurring thing. So, okay, I'll just take that out for now just so we have a better grasp on things. Car insurance, paying two fifty a month for car insurance? Actually, I'm not paying anything. I'm not paying anything for a car or in, I'm not paying anything right now. I have a lawsuit about my car. I don't, I don't, have, I don't pay a car note. I have a loan on my car, but I don't have to pay a car note because there's a transmission issue and I'm fighting the particular car and the law states that they can't do anything at this particular point. And I told them on day one. So I have no, but the law states that I have to have car insurance. So that would be, I will be getting car insurance soon because I have a ticket. So I'm forced to get it. I mean, it's illegal to drive without car insurance. Uh, yeah, true. Okay, so what is what is the balance of the car note then? Even though you're not paying it right now, what's the balance? It's about fifteen thousand. Fifteen between fifteen and seventeen thousand. And the car's only worth five thousand dollars? I mean, you do depreciation, mileage, yeah. What kind of car is it? In what year? Two thousand eighteen Ford Focus. I mean, that's worth at least how many miles is on it? We're about at one ten. I mean, it's worth probably about nine or ten thousand dollars. Depend on the shape of it. I mean, I see ones, one that has 107, that's 12,000. One that's 121, that's 9,500. One that's 8,800. It has a transmission issue. Oh, so that's having issues too. Okay. Mechanical issues. When did you buy this vehicle? 2022, August of 2022. Okay. And I've been fighting the dealership since August of 2022. It is now in federal court. You seem to be involved in a lot of lawsuits. Most definitely. I'm a fighter. Are these, I don't know what the word is, but what why, What do you think causes you to be in a lot of lawsuits? What do you mean? Like, I guess you you listed out, I mean, between the two different jobs, you're in lawsuits, with the car, you're in lawsuits. You said there's 50 to 
a hundred other lawsuits or something that you're currently involved with? Like what, what are all those about? Identity theft. Is that credit card companies? Is that with who, who are those lawsuits with? To kind of give you some background information, in 2013, I was arrested for fraud. In December of 2013, I was arrested for fraud. I haven't committed any fraudulent activity. They turned around and said, I went, I went to court for about a year. And they finally, they tried to get me for retail fraud. They tried to get me for drugs. They tried to do all these different things. And then it finally wound up. They said, I wrote a check to my landlord that bounced. How many people write checks and they bounce? They don't get arrested for fraud. Come on. So I sued the police department for that. I think what it all stems and boil down, boils down to is I was engaged to a guy years ago prior to me getting arrested for fraud. And I snapped out one time, tore up the house and... He teed me off one day. I knocked the stuff off the dresser and his business partner is a police officer. I got arrested in 2009. I got sent to jail for driving on suspended license. They tried to intimidate me and say, put me near somebody who robbed a jewelry store, stuff like that. I felt it was a tactic because I married a guy who had an issue or did something in the past that had something to do with robbery. I, I just feel like my ex-fiance may, my ex-fiance or his current wife or his kid's mother may have conjured up some stuff because they felt like I was wrong for doing what I did, for tearing up the house, stuff like that. I sued him. I actually gave him an engagement ring and I sued him to get that particular ring back. And they told me I had no grounds for suing him for that engagement ring. But a man can sue a woman all day and try to get his engagement ring back. But I couldn't get my ring, my ring back. And he's currently wearing that particular ring with his current wife. And I think it's a tactic because he was mad. He was upset. And his business partner was a police officer. So we got a lot to unpack there. Okay. So stems from a lot of... I guess a few different times you got arrested and now a lot of fraud things that um, have happened. Okay. We'll talk about money then and not about legal stuff. Finances. So on your budget, we're going through car insurance. You put 250 but you said you're not paying anything right now. Gas. How much are you spending a month on gas right now? Yeah, a lot. Probably close to four or $500. Four or $500 on gas. Okay. How much are you spending on groceries right now? Roughly about two, 250 are you utilizing any like food banks or food stamps or anything right now for for food? Yeah, I get I get food stamps. I think I get two forty eight, two fifty eight, two something, two something like that, two hundred and some change. Okay, and then subscriptions put one ninety nine, eating out twenty, entertainment twenty, gifts twenty, health and fitness twenty five, shopping twenty. So your total living expenses ballpark somewhere around the nine hundred dollars a month range. So how are we making ends meet right now? If Spending about nine hundred dollars a month, and you said you're making about two hundred dollars a month. Where is that extra money coming from? Well, like I, I don't pay for car insurance right now. I don't have that particular, I don't have that particular expense right now. So right now, the only thing that I have is gas. Oh, so the the two the two fifty on groceries you put that's all covered by the food stamps. Right. the 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 food stamps covers that, so I'm covered for food. Um, in terms of like car insurance, I'm not paying that. So really it's just, just gas is the main thing that's a couple hundred dollars a month. Oh, and I have a storage. Yeah, I have a storage unit, which is roughly about, i say about $75 a month. So those are the two expenses that I have basically is gas and storage. Storage, what's in the storage unit? Is there anything in there that you can sell? Why would I want to sell it? Money to live, money to, uh, if you have money that can help you start saving for deposit on an apartment so you can move in somewhere? No, where can you live with no job? A job is what's going to take care of that. Th that is true, but I'm saying you're going to need a deposit for that too so you can start saving money and you don't have to do it right now, but once you get a job, you need before his first paychecks come in, how can you save up or get some extra money to be able to have a deposit on a apartment or how room place to live? But yes, a job is the first priority to be able to live anywhere. No, um, I got illegally thrown out. It's against the law. So what I started doing was reading law books. I could just sit back and that's illegal. If it's illegal, I'll just sue you. That's illegal. The law states you're not supposed to do that. By law, he wasn't supposed to throw me out. That I can get money for that. So that's where the money gonna come from. Like when you start dealing with me, make sure you make sure you got your T's crossed and your I's dotted. Make sure it's not against the law. Cause I ain't got nothing to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm not working. I ain't got nothing but time on my hands. So make sure that everything you do is by the book. Otherwise, I'm gonna sue you for it. 
But do you really want to go through life and that's your motto is, hey, let's just sue everyone? Somebody did something to my life. I shouldn't be living in my car. So all I'm doing is fighting back. I'm fighting differently, though. If you're wrongfully terminated or for work or thrown out or evicted for not right cause, yes. But I don't think having the mentality of, hey, if you you mess with me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sue you is... Just a, I feel like a negative outlook on life versus, hey, let's go through life with a positive outlook and and uh, hopefully people are good to you and, and you'll be good back. Oh, most definitely. I don't, I'm don't. i a good person. I'm a good-hearted person. So I don't look to... I would think that most people would be good people, good-hearted people. You know what I mean? I don't think that nobody would set out to intentionally hurt somebody. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I've seen... You did it more than once. At this particular point, is is starting to be intentional. You do it two or more times, and I've told you, you know what I mean? At this point, it's intentional. You knew it was against the law when you did it. Then you turned around and did it again because somebody covered your behind. So I learned to fight fair. It's called fight fair. You know what I mean? Like, if you punch me, you know punching somebody. You can't just go around punching people. That's why we have laws. But you you punched me, and I didn't do anything. So guess what? I'm going to punch you again and see what you're going to do this time. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's against the law. I just played a victim role. Like... I'm not I'm not here. I'm not out to hurt anybody. You know, I don't want to hurt anybody, but I'm not here to be nobody's punching bag either. So you keep kicking me. I, I, oh, yeah, it's it's a way. It's against the law. I thumb through the law book. And again, that's not my M.O., but I have no income. I could you know, I could be an angry woman out here and throwing things and hurting people and stuff like that. No, I just read the law book. That's against the law. I sue you for that. I think it's better to read law books than to uh, go punch people. So it's a better approach. I, although I would like to just go punch somebody, but I don't want to. I don't want to go to jail. Let's not do that. We don't want to. We don't want to go back to jail. <laughs> okay. So month of May, you had twelve hundred and fifty-two dollars come in, and you had one thousand nineteen dollars go out. Where is this influx of money coming in in the month of May? I had a job last month, so I keep a job. I just don't keep that job long. Like I get hired. But then I get fired right away, so. How many times have you been fired from jobs? Jesus, a lot. And I guess my question is, do you think that is a personality thing? Do you think you're just clashing with people too much? Do you think you're doing something wrong? Or like, why do you think you're getting fired so much? Because if you're getting fired that many times, is it the job's fault or is it your fault? And that's what I'm just trying to understand. Like, why why you get fired that many times? I don't think I've heard... Have you been fired 10 times? You've been fired five times? You've been fired 20 times? Like, how many times have we talked to you? Over 10 times. I just I just explained to you, I just literally got fired because I questioned them on doing double the fingerprint. But if, that, if that's their policy is double the fingerprints, that's the policy. Right, but they should be able to show me that the policy states if you don't do double the fingerprints, you're going to get fired. Nobody showed me that policy. They just told me you're terminated. What I would like to do is, is change the policy as far as hiring people or firing people, because it's at will, meaning we can fire you today. That means I can come in looking pretty to work today, and she don't like the way that I look. I can get fired, but they could stage it as being something else. Come on, really, is that really a reason to fire somebody, especially when this particular person has already told you that they're suing for identity theft? When you go to jail, and I explained that to her, I said, when you go to jail, I said, they put you on a machine and they run your fingerprints. If that fingerprint is rejected, they make you do it again. You do not leave that spot until that particular fingerprint is clear. So why don't you do it this particular time? I'm just saying, I'm not, I wasn't contesting to not do I'm not saying no I'm not doing a fingerprint I'm not worried about my background check I'm not worried about any of that but I am concerned about somebody that wants to keep taking my fingerprint you want to keep taking checking my background why what are you looking for you know what I mean like I got fired from another job they wanted me to do two background checks I said no I did a background check before you hired me the policy was where well, the policy state that you have to, I said, before I was hired, before it was okay for me to work, they told me we have to do a background check. We have to do an extensive background check. So that means they got a background check, which cleared me to work. So why now that I'm working, you want to do another background check? Well, you told us you went to jail. I told you that in the beginning. You got the background check. Nothing showed up on my background. They want something to show up on my background for so bad, I guess. But it sounds like, I guess, you fighting that second background check when if you have nothing to worry about, if you just 
said, hey, okay, get the second background check, you still have that job. And then some of the fingerprints, you said, hey, okay, I'll do the second fingerprint, you still have that job potentially. So it's like, yes, I understand that. It can be frustrating at times, but what's more frustrating, doing those things or not having a job? You know what? When I'm in my car, I'm at peace. I don't have the drama. I don't have to deal with that. That's unnecessary. Come on. All I said is run the fingerprints. If they come back rejected, I'll do from fingerprints again. It's a possibility I could have did both of those fingerprints. And guess what? Those fingerprints come back rejected again. So guess what? Now you have to come back while I'm working and get those same set of fingerprints or get a different set of fingerprints. Come on. Let's, it's not that serious. They need to be reprimanded for that. I don't disagree. There, there could probably be an easier way to do it. But I'm just stating that I would rather have a job and do the second fingerprint and they do their process, whatever stupid reason they have to do it, than, hey, get terminated. We'll dive back into the finances then and see where this money was going in the month of May. So let's let's run through this. It looks like you just move you spent a lot of stuff on your Cash App card. This is when you're still working with Amazon, but you have little meals at Taco Bell that are two or three dollars that you're spending gas on here. Loan repayments I see on here a bunch of loan repayments. Some TJ Maxx for thirteen dollars, Dollar Tree for a dollar. So just little little things here and there. Uh, you spent eleven or a thousand dollars this month, which you brought in more than that. So you saved two hundred dollars throughout the course of the month. But a lot of gas, but some many things on here. Okay, so and then credit cards. You sent over a credit card statement, and you have a sixteen hundred dollar balance on your credit cards right now. What happened to that account? You closed that account and you stopped using that card, but you opened up a new account. You said, <laughs> I sued my credit card company. Another, another lawsuit? Yes. Oh my goodness. I've had my credit card since 2018, 2019. They closed my credit card because I rented a car and this car tried to get $3,000 off my credit card and I offered to pay them cash with my debit card. They refused. Then they was able to get some money off of my credit card. I filed a dispute. They wouldn't give me my money back. My credit card company wouldn't give me my money back, even though I sued the car company, the rental car company, and they weren't supposed to take the money. And I refused to pay the credit card company the money that the rental car agency took from my credit card. So if I refuse to pay, and I'm used to paying every month, they close my credit card. I'm not paying that. I sued them. I'm not paying them. So you sued the car rental company and the credit card company. So we got more more lawsuits there. So who'd you open your up your new credit card with? My credit card company, Capital One. Same company. I thought you're suing them. That's what I'm saying. I maybe they felt like later on we screwed up. So what they ended up did now before I had a what is it, secured and unsecured? I had a secured credit card. Now I have an unsecured. Now I have to now I had to put up my money in order to get it, and then they're going to upgrade me. So they basically pulled me down to try to lift me back up, but you shouldn't have never pulled me down in the first place. I feel like I'm going backwards. Like, honestly, in life, I feel like I'm really going backwards. Okay, so credit cards are, you got a $1,600 balance. They'll get that money out of you one day or another. It might be six years now, and it probably will take you to collection. I'll file bankruptcy first. Well, there's no point in filing bankruptcy right now when, I mean... I guess you got the car note that you're being suing for the credit card. But like you shouldn't file bankruptcy over sixteen hundred dollars in credit card debt. I don't really have right. That's why I haven't filed bankruptcy because I don't really have debt that can even be really wiped away. You can't wipe away your student loans. So okay, so credit cards. I I'm trying to figure out how do, how do I help you here <laughs> because lawsuits everywhere. Terminated from a lot of jobs. It's uh, it's difficult to change your financial picture without a job. So the first thing you need to do is is a job. And I think the next job you walk into, let's figure out how do we get along with people? How do we understand their policies? And if they tell you, hey, look, we need a separate background check or separate fingerprints, maybe we need to do those so we can have a job and have income coming. Maybe not fight them about that out the gate. Let's get in the door and work for a few weeks first. But job is the first thing you need to do, figure out how do you get a job, how do you get income coming in. Second thing is after you start getting a job, you got to figure out how to budget and track your expenses. I don't know if you're tracking your expenses now or not, but using different tools, I mean, you're going to lose access to some things, I'm assuming, once you start having a job like food stamps. So you're going to have to figure out how do you budget, make sure you're spending the pro appropriate amount of money on food and not eat out every single meal. So budgeting is, is the first 
thing you have to do once you get a job. Because I want you to be able to save up, get a job, and be able to live in an apartment and not have to worry about living out of your car every single night. More comfortable, cleaner, and more stability and, and security too. But once you get that set up, are you familiar with the debt snowball method? Do you, do you want to pay off your debt one day? I do. When, if, if they pay me for this lawsuit, I'll be debt free. One lawsuit, this one lawsuit will cover all my debt. But you can't depend and hope and pray that this lawsuit is going to solve all your problems because it might not. No, I didn't. I'm not depending on that. But I know for a fact that that one lawsuit will cover my com- entire debt. It'll wipe out my entire debt. Okay, well, if you win that lawsuit, pay off all your debt. Don't even spend a dime of it. Pay off all your debt. Put the rest in a savings account and don't spend it because you need a job before you even touch that money. That money needs to go away towards retirement. So hopefully hopefully you don't spend any of that if you win the lawsuit. But let's also not depend on the lawsuit for changing your financial situation. So whether you have a lawsuit and you win it or not, you've got to get a job because otherwise you're you're going to be right back in the same spot. And then you got to start figuring out how to pay off your debt. Are you familiar with the debt snowball method? I'm not familiar, no. So basically what the debt snowball method is, you list your debts from smallest to largest and you pay the minimum payments on all of them. And then if you have $500 left over each month, you throw all of that to the lowest payment first. So in your instance, you have $125 personal loan, $300 in your other debt, $1,600 credit cards in the student loans. Car note, I'm not going to talk about because I guess you're in a lawsuit about that right now. So if you pay the minimum payments across everything and you have $500 left over, you throw all that extra to the personal loan, pay that off, the remaining amount towards the other debt, and then you go to the credit card next and then the student loan. Does that make sense? Just list them smallest to largest and go after the smallest ones first to wipe them up faster? Yeah. That's how you pay off debt. It's a lot, it's a more advantageous way because you get the small little victories of paying off the small debts first before you start attacking like a $45,000 student loan. But those are the main things you got to focus on right now, I guess. First is, is job. Second is budgeting. Third is paying off debt. After you after you get a job, obviously saving up for a deposit first on an apartment and moving into that. And then you start attacking the debt. Don't worry about the debt until you get a place that you can live. But I guess the main thing for you is like figuring out how can you go through life without I don't want your whole life to be, hey, hey, how can I sue this person? How can I sue this person? Because I feel like that's what you've been doing for the last 10 or 15 years is figuring out how to either put yourself in situations that have led to that or bad luck, I guess, is pushing you in situations that has come to lawsuits. But you got to figure out mentality moving forward. Maybe, maybe Michigan's not the right place for you. I don't know if that is, if that's because that's where you are and that's why you're suing everyone because you're living there. Maybe you need to look at other cities that are low cost living cities that have jobs and you start fresh there. They have other retail jobs, other restaurants, other stuff. And you can start with a fresh play without anyone that, that might know you in this current town that doesn't like you for whatever reason, based off your history and experiences you had. Maybe that's an answer. It's something you need to do. That's something to look at. And then I'll send you a bunch of resources about investing. We can't even talk about investing right now because we have a whole lot of mess we got to clean up before we can talk about investing but once you get out of debt then you can start investing and i want you to be 65 67 not have to depend on social security because who knows if social security will be here in 20 years i don't know so we got to figure out how do we change the situation for right now and you have i mean 20 years to change it but the longer you wait the harder it is to change your situation to get out of debt student loans aren't going away the government might one day but you could wait 30 years and that still might not happen. Credit cards aren't going to go away because they're going to garnish your wages if you don't pay them off. Car note, I guess you're trying to sue your way out of that one. And then the other stuff, the small old debts, they're going to, you need to pay those back as well. So I guess I have a, I have a couple questions for you to, before we wrap up. What do you think the biggest financial mistake you've made in your life is? Financial mistake that I made of my life? Probably going to nursing school. And do you think there's any way you can put that degree to use? The nursing's school do you have to go past new exams to be able to be a nurse again or no i feel like that might have been one of the biz- biggest mistakes of my life and is that the entire is that entire forty five thousand dollars of student loans honestly i could have had my nursing degree without any student loans i didn't those student loans was for me to live off of when i got terminated from the hospital i had a 401k so i actually we lived off of my 401k for years I was able to pull out money from my IRA because I rolled it over from a 401k to an IRA. I pulled money out of my IRA and we lived off of that for a hardship. And that's how we lived. And then student loans and then little part-time jobs that I would get. So that was the gist of 
my income. And thank God I worked those, what, seven years at the hospital because that, that's why I said pay myself first. When my paycheck came, they was taking money out for my savings account, for my 401k. So when I left there, I had maybe $30,000, $40,000 saved, saved up. So when I did hit that hardship after 2007, I didn't actually pull money out of my IRA until 2012. And that's how I lived. And that's when I started getting student loans because I couldn't get a job or I couldn't keep a job, more or less. Yeah. Okay. Nursing school is expensive. And I guess pulling from your retirement accounts too, I mean, that's got to be a goal too moving forward, especially being 45 is you need to make sure you're not pulling from retirement accounts again, because that just, if you pull from retirement accounts in your fifties, then you're going to wake up in your sixties and have nothing in there. Like we're kind of at right now. So understood you can't change the past that, Hey, you got to use it for those times, but let's make sure we don't pull from that again. But I guess, can you, can you tell me what is one thing you would tell to someone in a similar situation as you? What's one piece of advice you'd give them? Somebody that's living in a car or financial situation? Financial situation. Overall, anything. What's one piece of advice you have or a couple pieces of advice? I guess, I mean, my financial situation is so, I want to say it's, it's so horrible. The only thing that I see getting you out of this particular financial situation is getting a job. Work. Do something. You know, I started... I started a business, but I've done that for a while. It's not really bringing in a whole lot of income for me. I even tried to do an SBA loan. It's not. Don't, don't, no, don't, don't try to do any loans right now. That's the, that's the bad, worst thing to do right now in your situation. If you try to tack on more debt, it's just going to put you in a further hole and uh, set you further behind. So don't even try to do an SBA loan or anything. Granted, I mean, I, I don't think you got approved for it, but going into more debt, start your business. I mean, that's just, that would just set you back so much further right now. At this point, I, I've even, I've done so much research and stuff like that to where I said, I'm going to look at this as being a hate crime. I look at this as being a hate crime. Somebody really, I really pissed somebody off. I really hurt somebody really bad. And I, sometimes I say things and I, you know, I, we have a freedom of speech and somebody might've got hurt by it. Cause the stuff that I'm going through is, yeah, somebody had to really be angry because why would, I don't never want anybody to be this low on the totem pole. You know what I mean? Like, I literally have experienced some things I never have experienced in my life. Honestly, I didn't get this low until I hit my 30s. Actually, I want to say till I hit my 40s, which is really strange because I, that's why I said I'm going backwards. And that's why I say, you know what? I think what happened at this point which is my ex-fiance. I pissed somebody off. I hurt somebody's feelings. They was really hurt. And instead of them doing me, like I'm gonna sue it, I'm gonna file a lawsuit against you because that's wrong. People fight differently. That's why I said fight fair, learn to fight fair because people gonna make you mad as long as you are living. It depends on how you handle that. I mean, that's just life. What's what's stopping you from going to a new city if that's if that's the case you think you are, like you won't be able to get a job in this area what's stopping you from going to a new city new state and starting fresh again you know what i've lived in three different states i lived in michigan i lived in north carolina i lived in texas i've always had a cushion for myself that's why i said i pissed somebody off because now i don't even have that cushion to fall back on because normally i'd be like Psh, i chuck you the deuces real quick and i leave the state i have no problem with leaving at this point, somebody want me here, maybe because they can only get me here. If I go somewhere else, they can't get me. But if I'm here, they know where I'm at. I can't go nowhere. You here. We know where you at. She ain't got no money. She can't go nowhere. My money is so low to where I have to basically stay in the same vicinity as far as living. I go to the same gas station. I go to the same places to take a shower because my money don't afford me to go anywhere else. $200 a month? What the hell is that? Who can live off of that? That's nothing. But that's all that I can afford to do. So therefore, I'm stuck in this little box. Is there not a town nearby that you could drive to that you could start over in or another city? No, the little cities are right here. I've lived in practically the surrounding cities. I lived in every city surrounding here. I'm in Flint, Michigan. So I've lived in Burton. I've lived in Davidson. I lived in Clio. I've lived in Grand Blanc. I've lived, the only place I haven't lived that's a surrounding city is Swartz Creek. But everything surrounding Flint, I've lived in that. I've lived in Oakland County. You know, who, whoever it is, I want them to show their face. Like, you know, show your face. You want to fight? Let's fight. You know what I mean? If you, if whatever type of fight you want to do, let's get out here and let's fight it out. Just, you know, don't keep ruining my life because I, I, 
I don't hate nobody that I feel like I'm on. I, I need to go on a show. Somebody need to go on a show. Maury, you know, Maury used to have that show years ago where they say, oh, you hurt me when we were in, you know, sixth grade or something. And, you know, I'm here to show you. You know what I mean? I feel like that's what I'm dealing with right now. Well, I'll be cheering you on and I'll be rooting for you. For hopefully, if you keep hustling, trying to find jobs, something will click eventually. If you have a resume you want me to look over, send that to me. And um, I can provide some feedback on that. I just, I wish the best for you. I want you to be able to find a job, be able to have some financial stability and then be able to start making some progress on this. Sounds like you've gone through a lot of hurdles throughout life and a lot of challenges. And um, you seem like a, a nice person. And I, I don't know why someone would be out to hurt you, but I understand that some people deal with things differently or take things wrongly. And um, I wish you the best in the future. And I'll send you a lot of resources up after this as well, just about finances. And um, if I can ever be a helper, provide advice on the financial side. Cannot help you on the legal side because I'm not a lawyer, but um, on the financial side, whether it's what you should do about credit cards, should I open up a new credit card? Answer is no, don't use credit cards because you don't have money and that will just push you more debt. But if I can provide any advice there and I'll send you a bunch of resources and videos and stuff to watch as well, just to learn about finances more. Hopefully we can do a follow up in six to 12 months and see where you're at. Hopefully with a job, uh, with some stability in your own place. And uh, I'll be I'll be rooting you on. So awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that.